Hello, this is the uh, lesson on applying image maps to your model. We're going to learn in this lesson how to map an image um, or more than one image onto a three-dimensional surface um, using basic projection techniques and basic mapping techniques and how to rotate position and trim decals to put on your models. Um, so this could be thought of as applying stickers to the model in a way. Now let's go ahead and set our project folder to the tutorial folder that you've downloaded. And we're going to open a file called car start. And um, this is not a problem, it's just a holdover from older older versions of Maya. You can just press OK on that. Okay, and there's some kind of hiccup in this scene. Um, I can see from the outliner that the models are there, but they're not showing for some reason. Um, hopefully, by the time you see this, I've got this fixed, but if not, what you want to do is just do a new scene, don't save that scene, and go to File, and what we're going to do is we're going to import carstart.mv into a new scene and that should do it. So if you click import it'll just um, it's still going to give you this warning about mental ray nodes which doesn't hurt anything and then we can proceed with the tutorial. So <clears throat> let's go to the hypershade window We'll go to Windows, Rendering Editors, Hypershade. And we're going to go to the car body. All of these are going to say car start colon now in front of their various names. So, um, so we're going to go to car body and we're going to add decals to the body. Now we're going to do that by creating a new shader. So right click on that. No, I'm sorry. Click Edit, Duplicate, Shading Network. Do not use copy and paste when duplicating shading networks. Only use Edit, Duplicate. And we're going to middle click drag the new one that we just created to the car body and it won't look like anything has happened except that you should see down here result dropped car body onto car start bar body so it's an identical material but we just dragged it onto the the body Let's add an image map of the car's number to the color channel. An image has been provided already called car decal dot PSD. So let's go to color and we are going to right click on file and we're going to choose create as stencil. and we want to first select the file node and under image name we're going to click on the folder and go to car decal uh, we're going to go with P uh, TGA I think that was a misprint where it says T uh, PSD so there's the car decal and what we're going to do with that is um, create a transparency using that stencil function that we that we brought it in with. So um, and if you see any path other than source images slash car decal dot TGA when you put an image into one of these nodes then something is wrong with your folder structure and you will want to correct that for the project. 
your links will break and you will lose points. So you should see this exactly. Right now the image covers the car body entirely, obscuring the original turquoise paint job. We applied this as a stencil to trim off the blue areas. So let's do that now. <coughs> um, let's graph the network again in the hyper shade just to make sure we've got it all. And let's turn on textures so we can see it. Huh, should be seeing it. Let me make sure I got that material right. Okay, it didn't apply, so I just made sure the the uh, material applied by going back to assign existing material and picking car body. So I'm not sure why that happened, but um, it's on there now. So get this out of the way for the moment. Okay, so that's not obviously quite the effect we want. Um, we want to see the original paint job and we want the decal to just be the number 23 sitting on the hood. So let's take a look at the texture and make sure that you see this. If you don't, reapply it just in case. And let's go to the place 2D texture that feeds into the, the car decal into the file node, in other words. Now we're going to use this to change the size of the decal and change the positioning of the image. First we need to make it smaller. So it is, we're going to do this numerically. Um, which is not as nice as interactive, but it is more accurate. In terms of coverage, the easiest way to do this is to experiment. So try 50%, or in other words, 0.5. So, and I said hood, and I think actually where this goes is on the door, not the hood. Um, and that's closer. And the figure that I ended up with just by experimentation was 0.16. And translate 0.47 in, in the U and, or 475, and negative 0.063 in V. Rotate the frame, I think, 180 degrees. And the way I got these numbers was by fiddling with it until it looked right. So nothing special about it, really. Um, let's go ahead and I think it's positioned the way we want. Um, if this isn't showing up, uh, most modern hardware should be fine, but if it isn't showing up, you can do a test render and see if it's doing what it's supposed to do that way. You can also use the IPR as you're doing this and just create a refresh box around the decal. We want to mask out the transparent portion or the blue portion of the image so that it cuts out properly. So let's go into the, let's go back to the the network on that. I'm going to graph that again and we're going to go to the stencil. Okay, and what we want to do is we want to, under the HSV color key, we're going to set the keying to that blue color. So um, 
just to make sure we have the right blue color I know what it is but let's open it up into Photoshop and I will get the exact value in Photoshop just to make sure let's go to documents my uh, projects project folder source images card decal and if I use the eyedropper to sample that color I can open up the swatch and I can see that it's 255 blue zero red zero green so I'll go back to Maya and I'm going to set my key color to that and that's going to that's going to make the blue around around the outside of this transparent so I'll click on that and I can type it in or I can just click on this guy right here and then turn on key masking and you should see it appear as a as a decal with with a um, transparency around it and I just broke my interface wahoo So it does look kind of funky in the um, render view, in, in the not in the render view, but in the perspective view rather. But you can see again when I render it, it looks correct, and the render view is what matters. So let me, I think I just broke my hypershade window. the browser to to a wonky spot here okay that ought to do sorry about that and we'll go back to graph network okay now I want to add a another file to this and I want it to go on the hood of the car this time. So what I want to do is this is for the flames and this is going to appear underneath the 23 image. So remember keep in mind it's a decal sitting on top of the car's paint job. Click create at the top of the hypershade window and under the 2D textures tab go to file and this will create a place 2D texture and a file too and this is the same thing as clicking file over here This creates a blank free-floating texture node in the shader's work area along with a placement node. Let's import the flames image in the file node carflames.tga and the background has already been set to the color of the paint job. And this will become the car's new paint job. Now we're going to need to connect this node so that it shows up in the shading network. And we're going to do that manually, so um, hopefully starting to demonstrate the power of these nodes here. We're going to click on the green circle that says out color right here, middle click on it, and drag it to the car decal.tga in node, which is the orange one.
a menu will appear as you can see we're going to connect the the attribute to your existing node and select default color a test render will show us that the flames are showing through but only within the texture frame defined by the decals mapping coordinates the gray area is the default color of the texture of the decals texture node let's go back to the hypershade window and we're going to middle click the out color into the stencil node to correct this and that is going to go into default color again And when we do another render, we get the correct color on the car now. Now we need to just do an adjustment of the mapping of the flames to make them look symmetrical. I'm going to do this in the hypershade window. Let's map graph the network. There's a bunch of different placement nodes here and it's hard to tell which one you're you're choosing. So now we have to use graph network. Um, and the coverage we're gonna um, sorry, the repeat UV, we're gonna repeat it two times on the V axis so that it mirrors properly. And the car is now complete.